Today, let us share the Word of God with the sermon titled, Arise, Shine. Under this subject, let us take time to think about what sleep means spiritually. The Bible very often says, Be alert and self-controlled, watch and resist the devil, and so on. What will happen if we cannot wake up from spiritual sleep? This is a very important matter. If we are in a deep and long spiritual sleep, we cannot help but fall into danger. That is why the Bible gives us many teachings such as be alert, be clear-minded, and arise. In order to teach us about this, God recorded many cases in the Bible about the natural Israelites who were put to shame while sleeping. Today, let us look at two cases among them. Through the cases of King Saul and of Sisera, the commander of the Canaanite army, let us realize that if we do not wake up quickly from a spiritual deep sleep, we will fall into spiritual danger as well. Let's take a look at the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 26. King Saul was jealous of David and chased after him to kill him. Because of this, David was always in life-threatening situations. Still, David said, If King Saul is anointed by God, how can I resist God's anointed? Let's see the scene where King Saul, who did not recognize David's sincerity, was spared by David, who did not intend to harm him. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 6. David then asked Ahimelech, the Hittite, and Abishai, son of Zariah, Joab's brother, Who will go down into the camp with me to Saul? I'll go with you, said Abishai. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there was Saul, lying asleep inside the camp with his spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying around him. Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hands. Now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of my spear. I won't strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him. Either his time will come and he will die, or he will go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and water jug that are near his head and let's go. So David took the spear and water jug near Saul's head and they left. No one saw or knew about it, nor did anyone wake up. They were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. When Saul heard the people chanting, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands, an evil spirit came upon Saul. Since then, he was consumed with jealousy and tried to kill David. But David never let anyone lay a hand on Saul, God's anointed. Saul and his followers always chased after David to kill him. In order to show he had no intention of killing Saul, David and Abishai went to the camp of Saul at night. But everyone was asleep, including the watchmen. It was an opportunity for David to kill Saul, but he didn't. Instead, 
he took Saul's water jug. Later, David said to Saul, Why are you trying to kill me? If I was willing, I could have killed you ten times or a hundred times, but I have not done so. He said, That night I took the water jug which was beside your head. This is evidence that I have no intention to kill you. What we have to pay attention to is that while sleeping, no one is aware of death even when death is near. Even though destruction or death is near, no one can sense it if they are in a deep sleep. In addition to the case of King Saul, let us see another case in the book of Judges, chapter 4. In Judges, chapter 4, verse 17, Prophetess Deborah instructed Barak to defeat Sisera, the commander of the army of Jabin, the king of Canaan. In those days, Jabin severely oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Let's see the scene where Sisera, the commander of the army of Jabin, the king of Canaan, fled after defeat in battle. Let's look at verse 17. Sisera, however, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Eber the Kenite, because there were friendly relations between Jabin, king of Azor, and the clan of Eber the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in, don't be afraid. After being defeated, Sisera fled to a friend's house. Verse 18 says, Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she put a covering over him. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, Is anyone here? Say no. While he lay fast asleep, exhausted. We should learn that sleep could lead to death. But Jael, Eber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. Let's see verse 22. Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army of Canaan, that had oppressed Israel for 20 years, brought death upon himself in the end. It was because he was in a deep sleep. He ran to those who had a close relationship with the king of Canaan and asked for shelter so that he could rest for a while. While he was fast asleep, he was eventually killed. Through the scene of Sisera's sleeping and death, God gives us many lessons. King Saul was in a deep sleep and was in danger since David could have easily killed him if he was willing. Sisera, the commander of the Canaanite army too, fell into a deep sleep and was killed. Then what about our spiritual state? If we are spiritually in a deep sleep, we are in danger of being destroyed by Satan at any time. That is why God warns us, through all the teachings of the Bible and His prophets, be alert or keep watch. 
This does not mean that we must keep awake physically. It means we must be alert without losing faith. While Saul was sleeping, he did not notice that his destruction was near. When Sisera was in a deep sleep, he was killed. Through these cases, we must realize once again how falling asleep spiritually can bring miserable destruction. Therefore, we must be alert without falling asleep. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist Him, standing firm in the faith. What does the Bible say in verse 8? Be alert. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for those who are asleep. He can never stand against those who are alert. He keeps looking for those who are dozing off, sleeping, having no willpower, and being in unfavorable situations to defeat their enemy. Who is getting weak? Whose faith has cooled down? Who has lost hope for heaven? Aren't these the situations where they are spiritually asleep? At any time, they may easily be attacked by their enemies and destroyed by external factors. These situations are referred to as spiritual sleep. Let's move on to Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. It says, Therefore, do what? Keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have done what? Kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Here too, keep watch is repeatedly emphasized. Let's move on to chapter 25. Verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore do what? Keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Through the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus explains the prophecy that those who are not alert will not be able to enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. Those who doze off and sleep come to face such a terrible destruction in the end. Let's go to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, verse 33 says, Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to do what? To keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. God keeps asking us to be alert. Let's go to Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Verse 35 reads, Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be what? Good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. 
they must be found watching. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. The words, be alert, watch, are repeated constantly in the Bible. Then, what should we do to be spiritually alert? What situations are referred to as sleeping or as being awake? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Come back to your senses as you ought, and do what? Stop sinning. We can say that coming back to our senses and no longer sinning is being awake. The King James Version Bible says, Awake to righteousness, so we should do righteousness without sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. Those who are awake live a righteous life without sinning. The state of being awake spiritually is a state of doing what is right and not sinning. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Chapter 16, verse 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in what? The faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Here too, we can see that unless we stand firm in our faith, we are spiritually sleeping. We must hold firm to our faith. My faith is weak now. It has cooled down. When this happens, you feel it yourself. I have become drowsy just like those in the parable of the ten virgins. Just like Saul, I was sleeping and didn't notice the impending destruction. Like in the rare case of Sisera, he did not recognize his imminent death and was killed by a woman. While he was in a deep sleep, not only a woman, but even a child could defeat Sisera. This is what can happen to anyone who is in a deep sleep. All heavenly blessings that have been stored up can easily be lost in a moment. That is why God says to His children, Be alert. Keep watch all the time. As we have just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we should do what is right and stop sinning. Those who stand firm in faith never doze off or fall asleep. They are always awake. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 6. We cannot randomly choose which situation is defined as being awake and which situation is sleeping. Taking a close look at the situations in the Bible, we should always be alert and self-controlled. When you fall asleep, you cannot resist the devil. You are defenseless against any attacks from the devil. You can fall, get hurt, or have your soul dragged to the path of destruction, even with something that seems like nothing. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. 
In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. There is no movement when a person is sleeping. So a sleeping person cannot rejoice or feel happy. While living our life of faith, if we do not feel happy enough to dance for joy, rejoice, or give thanks, we must be in a state of spiritual sleep. People who are sleeping cannot put the words of God into practice. Suppose that a person who has never been to the United States or traveled abroad is leaving for a trip tomorrow. Can that person fall asleep tonight? What should I prepare? Will it be hot or cold? Because of thinking of this and that, he might be nervous and excited. What about us, the heavenly people? Because we hope to enter the kingdom of heaven, we are waiting for it, right? Someone sleeping cannot feel happy nor dance for joy. Only someone who is awake can feel happiness, joy, and thankfulness. As it says in Ephesians chapter 6, the person who says, let me fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, must be awake. Once we obey what God asks us to do, we always come to realize the reason why we had to do it. God's words are always given for our benefit. Even though you're on a vacation, at home, or with your friends, whoever you meet, it is good to let them know the gospel. Whether they listen or fail to listen, we need to let them know. This is the work of those who are awake. In order to discern between being alert and sleeping, let us look at Colossians chapter 4. Let's see Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being what? Watchful and thankful. We must devote ourselves to prayer. How is our hearts when we pray? We should be watchful and thankful. Those who are sleeping cannot pay attention to the great promise of the heavenly inheritance. Sleeping people can never see, hear, or feel. No matter how good something is, people who are sleeping cannot tell whether something is good or bad. So we must all be awake and alert. Unless we wake up, we might be killed like Sisera or put in danger like Saul. If we all arise and do not spiritually fall asleep, carrying out the mission of the gospel God entrusted to us, God will solve all problems. If there is something we must do on the earth, it is to believe in God the Father and God the Mother and to testify to all nations about the way to return to our eternal home, heaven. Shouldn't we make this known to all peoples? Lastly, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. What other evidence proves that a person is awake? Chapter 2, verse 21. If a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the Master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, 
able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct, in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Here, we can see that those who are awake obey God's will and follow His will. What about those who are asleep? No matter how many times God says, this is the way to receive blessings, if you do this, we can all enter the eternal kingdom of heaven quickly. Those who are asleep can neither hear God's words nor put them into practice. No matter if they hear the words of God a hundred or a thousand times, can those words create a positive effect if they don't put them into action? When the protagonists of the prophecy are awakened to the words of God and act accordingly, all things will be fulfilled. This is how God works. Didn't God prepare all of this for us, to bless us? Those who are sleeping, cannot help but be like Sisera or King Saul. Now, let us not fall asleep or doze off, but wake up from a deep spiritual sleep. We must be awake, arise, and come to our senses. If we cannot tell whether we are walking toward the kingdom of heaven or toward the world, and we live like the people of the world, what will the outcome be? we will be destroyed just as Sisera was. Through the biblical history of Sisera, who fell into a deep sleep, was unable to wake up and was drawing close to death. God wants to teach us that we must never let this kind of spiritual situation happen to us. Today, our God has taught us many ways to be alert. Do what is right. Do not sin. Stand firm in faith. Pray earnestly. Give thanks. And follow the will of God with joy. God asked us to engrave all these teachings deep in our hearts and to spread the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. All these instructions of God are the measures God takes to keep us from being in a deep sleep. In order to wake us up, God says, Arise and shine the light, testify about the words of truth, and spread this gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Then you will be able to defeat all the conditions that make you fall asleep. Remembering once again, the love and grace God gives us. Let us complete preaching to the whole world and quickly return to our eternal home, heaven. This concludes today's sermon. Thank you very much.